Marcus Mariota, backup quarterback, departed. Who did he sign with? I it was in my brain and now it's gone. He's Washington. Where did he go? He Where went did to Mariota Washington. Go? Right. Oh, he's in the Commanders. That's right. right. The Commanders. He stays in the division, so yeah. they're going to need a new number two behind Jalen Hurts. And, you know, not a horrible deal for Mariota, and he'll clearly be the backup to whoever they draft with the second overall pick. But his career keeps going. Jameis Winston keeps going. The number one and number two picks overall in 2015, they're still they're still in the game now as backups. Mariota in Washington and Jameis Winston in Cleveland. Are you Let's surprised by, like, no the- Sam Howell? I mean, he's not going to be the backup, right? Just why we're on that? Well, that's – yeah, I mean, I've seen some chatter that they might be willing to trade him, but I where think... do you trade him to? I think I th- they saw enough last year to come to the conclusion. I think last year, part of the experiment last year was, can he become a franchise quarterback? Let's see. And they come to the conclusion that he can't be. So you're right. What are they going to do with Sam Howell? Do they keep three on the depth chart? Hey, look at last year. All the quarterbacks that got injured. Sam Howell's got a low cap number. Mariota comes in affordable. You draft your guy with the second overall pick. Maybe you keep three, or maybe Howell is just a guy you hang on to until we get through the first few rounds of the draft. Exactly. Teams looking for quarterbacks don't yeah. get a guy, and they throw a fifth round pick, fourth round pick, whatever, to Washington for Sam Howell. Yeah, I think that I, that I think the lines will be open for Sam Howell. You know, I, I think they they you know again maybe they keep him right, but yeah, to the point you always make the the you know training camp early on in the season, maybe an injury happens, whatever. Right. But yeah, by all due indications here, it, it certainly seems like, yeah, Mariota is signed because they're going to take a quarterback at number two and they go, oh, hey, now we got a good veteran backup quarterback here. Right. And probably in their world, too. I mean, the, the, the signs that get spoken to me here is guys like Dan Quinn and Cliff Kingsbury came in and they're like, ah, no, Sam Howell doesn't fit this offense. He doesn't fit with, with Cliff Kingsbury doesn't like him, right? Let alone they might not want a guy like Sam Howell sitting behind their number two pick and Jaden Daniels, who I'm calling for, right? They might not want that there. So they're like, if he plays a bad game, fans are going to be like, well, Sam Howell made some of those throws last year. So I, I, I think, you know, you know, we're on the, the right track there as far as where Sam Howell is in the commander's organization. I really do think, though, there's wisdom in taking a step back from what used to be the notion that you need two quarterbacks and that's it. If you get down to your third quarterback, you're already screwed. I remember Mike McCarthy explaining that years ago. Yeah. We don't have a third quarterback. If we get down to our third quarterback, the, the, it's, the cause is already lost. I think after last year, it makes sense to have that third guy because even though we thought all along that the quarterback position was impervious to a rash of injuries, we saw a rash of injuries. So we can either just disregard it as an aberration or say maybe this needs to be a factor in how we shape this roster. So we have a third guy who's ready to go in case something happens and one and two can't play. We're not out there burning up the phone lines at the trade deadline, looking for anything we can, desperate to find anyone who can play. We got a guy who knows our offense, knows our system, knows our players, knows our coaches, has an apartment, ready to go. It's easier that way. I think we may see more teams doing that, which is one of the reasons why, to go completely off topic, even though we're already one step removed from what we should be talking about, Mason Rudolph's still in play for the Steelers. People thought that when this Russell Wilson stuff happened, that's it for Mason Rudolph. He's still in play. And I think it comes down to whether or not he's willing to take the league minimum to come back to Pittsburgh. But why not have three? They had three last year. Why not have three? That way, when injuries happen, you've got more protection and you're on notice after last year that it might be smart to have it. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the league thinks of that situation. Do they look at it and go... Wait, that was just a flash in the pan, weird type of year, right? You know, or do they go the route of like what you're talking about? Well, maybe we should keep three to protect ourselves. I, I still think at the end of the day, because of the rules and all that, teams are going to err on. Oh, we could save a little extra money by not giving this third string quarterback, you know, uh, a million or two million dollars, and we can maybe get another player on the roster and some other need or whatever. But yeah, I'll, I'll be interested to see how that plays out and see like the ramifications through the league because yeah, last year was was definitely alarming, but we haven't seen a year like that in quite some time at the quarterback position. And last year was the year that they brought back the third quarterback rule and the the rules and regulations they applied to using it were so ridiculous that it never got activated. Yeah, it never right. actually got right. used in game where you can have 
that third guy in uniform who doesn't count toward the game day roster. Of course, that flowed from the NFC Championship game in 2022. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.